travelers on these trips once we entered the, this part of the park. Most days we were the only people around for miles. Folks who've traveled this way by pack know that there is one really heavy item that you have to figure into your planning. Water. A single gallon of water weighs 8.3 pounds, at least according to our Google overlords. That same gallon is the amount of water recommended as daily consumption for a person the size of the average adult assigned male at birth in the United States. So it seems reasonable to suggest that each of us in this family taking this crazy trip between hiking and paddling a canoe for hours each day would need at least a gallon of water, eight additional pounds to our load. We weighed our packs as part of the last bit of planning to make sure this was even remotely feasible. I don't remember carrying a gallon around. And maybe it's just because I was the youngest. But I think the real explanation was in the magical reality in that place at that time. You see, the interior lakes of the park were distant from farms and manufacturing. They were clean. Rangers tested them, posted results, and for all of our trips, we were able to drink from the deep lakes that we canoed across every day. As the person most often in the middle seat of the canoe, I often was tasked with refilling these canteens as we went. It was a big chore just dipping it over the side of the canoe. There was also a morning chore that my dad usually did he had a big collapse, a collapsible water container and he would take it out as soon as he woke up to fill it up for the coffee pot, for oatmeal, and to wash our dishes and fill our canteens before breaking camp for the day. He'd hop in the canoe and paddle out to a deeper spot where the water was more clear, where the sediment was settled and fill that jug and bring it back to camp. And when I was a kid, I just saw it as a morning chore. And my father was a morning person. So it just kind of made sense that he would do this. But as an adult, I know that this was dad's prayer. Dad was always the kind of person who benefited from some quiet time alone before beginning the work of the day, or honestly, before being besieged by his four kids at the end of the workday. So the time in the canoe, gathering the water, was dad's time to connect with the divine, with the eternal, to check in with himself, to marvel at the wonders of the natural world, and to, for practicality's sake, get a visual on the weather. He got grounded on those lakes. He was fed spiritually and emotionally as he made provision for us. And he brought his grounded, awed, and informed self back to us. So much love in a bowl of instant oatmeal. Dad prayed at the water. He gathered the water. We drank and cooked and planned the day around the water. We incorporated those Canadian lakes into our cells, joining its cool clarity with all of the other suburban Maryland water in our cells. It's no wonder that we you use return to water every September. The powerful symbol, both of something that feeds us that is a necessity for life and a human need that has historically brought us into contact with other people. Jesus met the woman at the well, after all, 
At least that's what Mary Travers used to tell us. At the stream, at the lake, at the well, at the campfire, in the kitchen, in a shared crowded morning prep bathroom, at the water cooler. Our need for simple biological nourishment and our fundamental needs for interaction and the reminder that we are part of a larger whole. Atoms joining into raindrops, falling on streams and rivers, rushing to the lake, running to the sea, returning to the sky to begin again. And in that continuous cycle, we experience the loneliness and sometimes solace of being alone, the profundity of individual growth before we return to the collective where all that we are bumps into everyone else's individual growth. My dad's ability to honor his needs and his contribution to the larger group, who, by the way, he needed to do this adventure in the first place, was a big part of what made our trips work at all. We were like everybody else, nourishing ourselves and discovering our gifts and our hurts. Coming to buoy ourselves, feed ourselves, and strengthen ourselves in community with all of our gifts and our raw places and our disgust at having to sleep in the tent again, bumping into one another at speed in a dance of continuous change. In water communion, we celebrate our joining from different geographies, from different experiences, with different gifts and different needs. We visualize the possibility of coexistence in all of our variety and opinion and goals. We see that we can mix and mingle as our true selves and make something larger that can bless us all. We all need time to think, to grow, to get grounded in our faith or in our hearts and to seek out the awe and the wonder that surrounds us. And we all, each of us need our time in the larger water, in community, in the mix. No matter who you are, where you are from, where you have traveled and what you have learned, you are welcome here in the gathered water of UUCD. No matter what your history, what your current story, what your hopes for the future may be, you are welcome here as you are. No matter what identities you carry, visibly or under the surface, you are welcome here. You're welcome here and further, we have faith that like every drop of water we've added to this bowl, that which you carry with you will enrich our community and help us all to grow in love. Welcome to the church here. Gather with us and let your cup be filled before you go back out into the world to learn more, experience more, do more, heal more, and then come back here to fill the cup of your heart again and share your new gifts and struggles with us here in the water. Hopefully you still have a stone in your hand, on a chair, maybe on the floor. It's okay if you don't, there are more. I'm going to ask now that you bring that stone with you and add it to the water. If you have a mobility issue, just raise a hand. Someone will grab your stone for you. 
imbue that stone with your gifts, with your concerns, with your hurts, and know that we can take it. We can take it all with love for you. As you approach, please look around for hands that are raised and help your friends bring their stones to the water. <laughs>